Father, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for another day of life. We thank you for tonight, Lord. As we expose the devil, we expose the enemy, we expose the unfruitful works of darkness, Lord. We uh, just want to expose the enemy, Lord, and we're here tonight to pray, Lord. Pray for protection of children. Pray against the plots and the plans of the enemy, Lord, and to be a light in this world, Lord. And we know that this world may be dedicating this day for darkness and for evil, Father God, but the devil can't own this day. This is the day that you have made, Lord. You've given life. Satan doesn't determine the days or the days of life. You do. So we thank you, Holy Spirit, that today it's not the, it's not the devil's day. It's your day. And forgive us for calling it Satan's day um, because it's not his day. He doesn't own this day, Father God. Maybe the celebrations belong to him, but this day is not Satan's day. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. We're going to strip Satan of his power and his, the authorities he thinks he may have with things he doesn't really have it with. Father, we thank you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Lord. Uh, I pray you would convict us. I pray you speak to us and you show us the right way. In Jesus' name, amen. So why don't we celebrate Halloween? So I kind of wanted to talk about it a little bit. And and so that way, if anyone asks you, 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 you have a response, a biblical response. Amen. Because as we know, here at Unity Church, we are a biblical church. We don't make stuff up. We don't just say whatever we want to say. We say things that the scriptures say because uh, there's a there's a good brother that I like to watch, uh, a pastor. He says, everybody's a Christian until it's time to get biblical. And it's so true. Everyone calls themselves Christians. But the minute you start pulling out the Bible and scriptures, all of a sudden, you kind of start realizing who really is a Christian and who's not a Christian. How do we know who's a Christian? The Bible says, if you love him, you'll obey all of his commandments. Amen. That means we're going to strive to obey everything God asks of us. Anything that obviously we're going to come up short. Amen. The Bible says, for we all fall short of the glory of God. We all mess up. We all make mistakes. We all sin. But it's not about any of these things. Um, it's about um, doing our best to be Christ-like, to be Christians, and not justifying sin. We're not supposed to be justifying sin. We're not supposed to be making excuses for sin. We're supposed to be held accountable. And um, we're supposed to do the right thing. Amen. So why don't we celebrate Halloween? So first off, just because you see other churches celebrating it and doing it does not make it right. We are in the last days. We I preach about this a lot. Guys, we are in the last days. Many preachers, I, I, guys, I've been excited. I don't know if you guys if you guys follow the Unity Church Instagram. I've been seeing other pastors speak out <laughs> and have been saying the same stuff that I've been preaching. I don't feel so lonely anymore. How many have been seeing the videos and seeing the other pastors and seeing a lot of the stuff? And they it's crazy because they we literally sound like each other. And for the record, I don't watch preachers. I don't watch YouTubers. My wife will tell you, I don't really watch anybody. I may watch some things that pop up here and there, but I don't watch nobody's messages or preachings because honestly, I, one, I don't have the time for it. And two, I'd rather get in my word. Um, and But I've been seeing some preachers on social media has been popping up and they've been speaking out the same stuff that we've been speaking about in this church. So it goes to show you there's other there's other real churches. There are other real pastors. There's other real men of God who are going to speak out against these things that are going on in the world. Amen. And as Christians, the first thing is that God calls us to be light, salt and light. Why? Because salt gives flavor. Salt preserves. Um, salt has many things. Light, you know, you can't have life without light. And 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 we we are Bible calls us to be salt and light of the earth. So today, October thirty first, the world has dedicated it to Satan, but it's not Satan's day. So if you said that, repent because no day belongs to Satan. He doesn't own the days. God does. The Bible says that today is the day that the Lord has made. That means that every single day belongs to Jesus. Satan would love for us to be saying it's the devil's day. You know, it may be the devil's holiday, but it's not his day. It might be his celebrations, but it's not his day. He don't own it. And um, 
it, if, if, if it was up to God, if he wanted to, he could wipe all of us out and him in one the blink of an eye. No problem. <laughs> and shut it down. So he doesn't he doesn't own anything. God owns the day. And um, but what does that mean about Halloween is that there are festivities and there's things and there's practices that first off, they're not of God. They're, you know, they're occultish, they're witchcraft. And I heard one preacher say this, and it's so true. You got Christians celebrating Halloween. Do you see worldly people, witches and warlocks and Satanists celebrating uh, Resurrection Sunday or celebrating the birth of Jesus? They don't. <laughs> but yet you got Christians who will celebrate Halloween. Oh, they'll have a trunk or treat event at their church. You can change the name, but you're still doing the same thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? People think because you change the name, all of a sudden it's it's okay. It's like, well, call fornicating something else, and it doesn't change what you're doing. You can say, oh, you know, you know, we if we start, that's what the devil is good at changing the names of things, right? So, it, it, like right now in the world abortion, same-sex marriage, all of a sudden it's called politics. That's not called politics. That's called wickedness. But but the devil loves changing the definition and the names of things. Why? Because Christians, church people, will eat it up in the name of being politically correct, in the name of, I don't want to offend nobody. But we got to understand is this, is that he loves making you question the things of God and changing names and stuff. But guess what? God changes names and Satan try, tries to do the same. Why do you think Saul's name got changed to Paul? And, you know, a a Abram was cha named changed to, to Abraham. It was Sarai. Now it's Sarah. God changed his name. So Satan's like, oh, let me change some names so people can get fooled and tricked. So, you know, you, I'm not going to sit here and explain all the origins of Satan and why you know, back in the days, they dressed up at, um, at, 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 as different costumes because they would use it to scare away demons, jack-o'-lantern. You, you can look all that stuff up. And um, clearly, this has occultish, demonic roots to it. And, you know, people start arguing and say, no, that's not what that was for. But period is this. I, I don't care what anyone says. The Holy Spirit is not going to lead you to celebrate darkness, evil, the dead. Like, do you think the Holy Spirit tells you go put skeletons, uh, scary objects outside your door, go put, you know, this out? It, he would never tell you to do that. You just got to ask yourself, would, would Jesus decorate his, you know, his place like that? No, 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 he wouldn't. Would he celebrate these things? No, he wouldn't. Because these things, they open. What it does is it opens demonic doors. And then when you celebrate Halloween and you participate in the things of Halloween, you open demonic doors and the enemy is always going to try to get you, always try to get you. I thank my parents, both my mother and my father, since I was small, they never let us participate in Halloween. And yes, when you're, you know, there's parents who'll be like, yeah, but the kids are small and they don't really understand. And I just want them to have fun. Well, guess what? Sin is fun. And once you start training your kids to start having fun against God, they're going to grow up the rest of their life saying, well, I'm missing out. Well, guess what? The, the going to the world is fun. Coming home late from drinking and sleeping around is fun, but you're going to pay a price for it. And, and, you know, once you start training kids, well, they're just little kids and we're just dressing them up. OK, guess what? Then a couple of years later, oh, they're just this and just that. Oh, it's just his boyfriend. Oh, it's just a girlfriend. Oh, it's just that. And then you don't draw the line. This is all demonic. And as parents, we got to protect our kids. My parents made it very clear. Yeah, you don't celebrate this. And when they say, oh, well, kids don't understand. That's a lie, because I can tell you right now, it's kind of an embarrassing story. You might laugh. It's OK. You can laugh. <laughs> But my my parents were very hard on that. And I was in first grade. So when you say kids don't understand, man, they do or your kid or your kid is in la la land. But kids do understand because I remember I was in first grade and um we got sent to school. I don't know how it is now in schools, but they would go on the intercom on Halloween. Isn't that crazy? How even the schools will have the whole day dedicated, at least when I was in school. We'll dedicate the whole day to darkness, evil, dressing up, candy, gluttony, and all these different stuff. And I remember they would go on the intercom at school and they'll say, 
<laughs> all the Christian kids, all the kids who don't celebrate Halloween, go to the library. Um, you actually did send us to school some of those days. So I remember I, my, I was in school and they said um, all the Christian kids go to the library. And I remember I rem that goes to show you this nation is changing because now I guess you guys are saying that it doesn't happen now. But when I was in school, they would tell you all the Christian kids and everyone who's, you know, religious, you get you would get sent to the library. You were not allowed to eat candy. You were not allowed to eat anything. And they would send you to the library and you were watching uh, like, I don't know, some boring like science thing on, on the TV. And I remember I was in first grade. <laughs> I was in first grade and um, I was going to get up and leave. And the teacher saw me like a little bit sad. She was like, where are you going? I said, oh, you know, I got to go to the library. And they'll call the enemy is. She's like, you don't have to go. Your parents are not here. There's nothing wrong with you dressing up and having fun. And she goes, you don't have a costume? I said, no. <laughs> um, it's kind of embarrassing. It's kind of funny. She's like, you don't have a costume? And I was like, no. She was like, well, I have a backup one. Do you want to put it on? And I was like, uh, and she just went to the closet. I didn't even get to answer. She was like, don't worry. I have one for you. And it was a big pumpkin outfit. And um, she brought it out. See, the Satan had a whole outfit put to the side for me. <laughs> and, um, and it was a big pumpkin outfit. And she came out and started putting the pumpkin outfit on me. I felt so convicted. <laughs> I'm a first grader, first grade. And I was feeling the conviction of the Holy Spirit. And I heard the Holy Spirit saying, what are you doing? Why? Because my parents trained me. The Bible says train a child in the ways of the Lord. And when they get older, they will not depart from it. Well, it's proof that it's true. I'm older and I've not departed from the ways of the Lord because my mother and my father trained me in the ways of the Lord. And I felt conviction. And to make matters worse, my sister, Connie, who's always bullied me since I was a little kid, just happened to be outside the classroom door where the little glass was and was like this, crossed her arms and was staring through the glass and going like this. <laughs> While I got this big pumpkin outfit on. And I told the I told the teacher, get this off of me. Get this get this demonic stuff off of me. And um she was like, um, she was like, What well, what's going on? I said, I'm not supposed to be celebrating this. She's like, Why? She was like, you know, um, I was like, because I'm a Christian. She was like, You never said you were a Christian. I was like, I'm a Christian. I'm not supposed to be wearing this. And she looked disgusted. She was like, take it off, take off. She was taking off the pumpkin outfit and like disgusted that I was a Christian. And she goes, go to the library. And she took the candies that were on my desk. It took it and, and, and sent me to the library. And I remember I got to the library and Connie was there and she goes, you're so lucky you came to the library because if not, I was going to tell mom and dad and you was going to get it for going home. <laughs> and I was like, it doesn't count. I was like, you better not say anything. That doesn't count. I, I didn't even get the candy. <laughs> and I, I remember I was in the library, but I felt peace. And I was in first grade. I had no idea, but I felt peace. I was like, you know what? The enemy almost got me, but hey, I re I, turned, I repented. <laughs> I repented. I took the pumpkin outfit off and, 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 and that was it. And, you know, and I was an adult. I never felt like I missed out. I never felt like, oh, I'm missing out on anything. I, I never I never cared because my parents taught me that it's not OK. So, you know, it's, this isn't this isn't right. Yes. And also the peace, knowing that I wasn't going to get hit also. But, you know, I also and, and, and I remember that because my parents trained me and all the other Christian kids, we would all sit in the library and hang, we were and we would we was hanging out with each other and we were being different little did i know that god was already training me at at first grade to be different
to be salt and light in there. I stole, I, I stood on being bold. I was bold. <laughs> I told my teacher, I'm a Christian. I ain't bound down to the Antichrist agenda. Even at first grade, man, Pastor Jamie was already being bold, saying, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fold, you know, for this. There's, there's no need for me to do this. And, um, and, you know, on, on Halloween, there's a lot of occultic practices that happen on Halloween. Witches and warlocks is the days they pray. They they pray on kids. They pray against. While we are P-R-A-Y praying, right? They are P-R-E-Y praying on the weak, praying on vulnerable people. And then this has infiltrated inside churches where people call it holy ween and trunk or treat. You're doing the same things. And the Bible says, don't conform to the patterns of this world. You, If you think dressing up your kids and doing it and calling it a different thing, you're conforming to this world. Might as well fornicate and just call it something else. Call it test driving. <laughs> call it something else. Call You know, you, you know, you start changing the names and all of a sudden they're not sins no more. See, these things, they're, they're not of God. They're demonic. They open doors to spirits. We think these things don't open doors, but they open doors. I'm going to share a dream, but later on, but I was sharing a dream with, um, I was sharing a dream with somebody, um, of something God was showing me of a spirit that came in through the TV, through something a child was watching. And I was sharing this dream with somebody with, with, with my mom actually. And my mom said, that's crazy because she goes yesterday, this person you're talking about was terrified of watching TV because something had popped up on the TV that they didn't know. And I dreamt with it, seeing that something came in through the TV. And I had no idea that this child was watching something and they were acting like that. And my mom could tell you and vouch and say, amen. I had no idea, but I dreamt about it actually last night. And I woke up in my sleep and I said, something happened on the TV and stuff like that. You got to be very careful and stuff. H how did I know that? I didn't. God shows me things. And, and I confirmed that spirits coming through stuff that you watch. That's why, why do you think when you watch a scary movie, you watch, you know, paranormal activity, all this stuff, demonic activity starts happening in your house. Things start popping up. Things start showing up and stuff. And sometimes no one even has to teach you that that happens. You already know that it happens. There used to be a show called um, Unsolved Mysteries. When I was a kid, my parents watched it a lot. And there was a lot of dark episodes of murders and real demonic stuff. And I remember when I would watch it, I would always see a black shadow watching me, right? And I grew up never really saying anything. And then not too long ago, I saw a meme where this grown up guy was like, you remember when you would watch Unsolved Mysteries and a black shadow would watch you and you'd keep like looking and it was there and it was there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that would happen to me. And I never told no one. And I guess it happened to multiple people that they made a meme about it. And a lot of people said that the same stuff happened to them. Right. And these things happen. Uh, you get sleep paralysis. You get filled with fear. I, and I've yet to meet somebody who watches a scary movie or a demonic movie and then you feel so freely and comfortable to move around in the dark. You know, it, this stuff is it, it, it's been dedicated for 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 the enemy and things of the enemy. Even Anton LaVey, who is the founder of the Church of Satan. Right. He said. I'm glad that Christian parents will at least let their children celebrate Satan one day. So if the the founder of the Church of Satan, right, is saying, I'm glad that Christians are dumb enough to let their parents, I mean, let their kids celebrate Halloween for one night. You think we should be doing that? If the Church of, if church of Satan, the founder said that, you think that's something we should be doing? No. And you say, oh, I just want the kids to have fun. Well, take, go take them to the park. <laughs> go have fun with them. Put a different movie on. Why, why all of a sudden that day is so vital to your kid? You think one day out of the year is so vital to your kid? No, I was raised in a Christian household. And yeah, I went through a season where I turned from God and I was a worldly person. But the, those roots of Christianity have always been in me since I was a small kid. That's why as I grew up and in the midst of my sin and all the things I was doing, I'm sure my parents were looking at me like, you know, where did we go wrong? But I went through a season of where I was in rebellion, but I knew deep down inside this isn't right. And I came back, 
you know, and I came back to the Lord. And that's why as as parents, if you're on it, you're a parent or you're one day you're going to be a parent, train your kid. Don't conform to this world. You're afraid of your kid missing on candy and dressing up. Well, why don't you worry about your kid's name missing from the book of life? What's more important that your kid missed out on one day of candy and dressing up versus an eternity of his name or his or her name not being in the book of life because you taught them that it's it's okay to do sinful worldly things as long as it's fun you know and I, I, and I ha and why because Halloween represents fear right and the Bible says for God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind. We're not supposed to be operating in fear. You shouldn't, as a Christian, you should not be watching horror movies, right? You should not be watching horror movies. These things open doors to demons. Guys, you guys have been in the church long enough. Amen. How many have been on here? You've seen us cast demons out of people. And some people on in that you can say, amen. You've been delivered before. You didn't even know you had a demon in you. How many can admit they're like, I didn't even know I had a demon until you came to our church and we prayed for you and the preachings convicted you and you felt it. And then and then God delivered you and set you free. And people say, oh, that's a weird church. Don't go to that church. They they cast out. Uh, they cast out demons. Well, exactly. Jesus casted out demons. The disciples casted out demons. Paul tells us if we believe we should be casting out demons. So. So it's crazy. I, you know, I've been labeled uh, a false preacher <laughs> by many people. I had somebody not too long ago label me a false prophet. And I'm like, how am I a false prophet? A false prophet doesn't speak against Satan. A false prophet <laughs> doesn't preach holiness. A false prophet doesn't teach you to live right before God. A false prophet. Come on, man. <laughs> A false prophet is not going to tell you, stop sleeping with your boyfriend, girlfriend. A false teacher is going to tell you, do whatever you want. You're young. Have fun. It's cool. And send you to hell. A false prophet and a false teacher and a cult leader is going to tell you things to pull you away from God and send you to hell. If anything, I warn people, don't do this so you don't go to hell. And people, people don't understand how uncomfortable and tough it is for me to be a pastor, especially being young. I have to have conversations and say and do things I don't want to do. <laughs> I have to tell people stuff, right? They don't they that they, they don't want to hear and I, I got to say it. I'm like, "Oh man, here here we go." You know, as a pastor, it's really hard, but I got I got to say the truth. I got to preach the truth. I don't get pleasure out of it. I don't get pleasure out of telling somebody where they do wrong. I don't get pleasure out of saying things to people. You know? So past most pastors, they live off ministry. I don't. They get a paycheck. I don't. And even the ones that get a paycheck don't really pastor nobody. I don't. I do this for free. And I, I, I do it because I love God. And 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 I preach the truth. A cult, you know, forget about the cult leader stuff. <laughs> but you know, people have said that, but I have yet to anyone say that to my face. I have yet to have anyone anyone confront me about any teaching or prophet anything and say it to my face. And guess what? They never will. They could say whatever behind my back, and I'm okay with it because it shows you got you you fear me too much to say it to my face, and you fear the God that lives in me too much to say it to my face. And you better know your Bible more than I do to say it to my face, because I have never preached anything at this church with no scripture. When have y'all seen me go and just start saying things and it wasn't backed up by the Bible? When have you ever seen me go and just start making stuff up and saying, God said this and God said that, and I don't have scripture. I give you guys so much scripture that it's so black and white. I don't have to twist it or say anything. It's God's word. It's not my word. This is God's word. Amen. But we live in a world that they don't know the Bible. They combat things with their emotions. Oh, I don't think that was God. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you felt. Right. And and um, it's not about what you think or you feel. It's what the word of God. It's what the word of God says. Amen. It's what the word of God says. 
And a lot of people don't want to hear what the word of God says. Oh, I think it's, oh, it's the way you interpret it. No, the scripture says that there is no private interpretation for scripture. We, we, we know what it means when you read it in context and it fits the rest of what the Bible says. It meant what it meant. <laughs> Who are you to be telling God what he meant by this or meant by that? He made very clear what he was saying. So Halloween celebrates fear, darkness. Does God call us to, have you noticed, you go to haunted houses and think it's always revolved around darkness. As kids, you grow up being scared of the dark. Why? Because even as kids, you're not even a Christian and you know that, that evil hides in darkness. Right? Am I right or wrong? When you grow up, you know that something's hiding that's not good in the darkness. I have yet to met, meet anyone that's scared of the light. It's like, oh my gosh, there's a demon in there. There's so much light in there. There's got to be a demon in there. Even in our in our human nature as non-Christians, we know that 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 there's something in the dark. Why? Because we know spirits hide in darkness. Like I said, I have yet to meet anyone say, I'm scared. There's a spirit in that room that all the lights are turned on. No. They they like to be they like to be in darkness, right? And 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 a lot of these these things as parents, man, you 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 gotta be conscious of these. I'm gonna give you an example. Um my cousins were watching a lot of Chucky movies. I used to live in Maryland, and for some reason, uh, a lot of more demonic things happen for some reason up north. Why? I guess because a lot of older stuff happened there. But you know, you look at movies like uh there's a movie called um what is this movie called? Uh Amityville Horror. You have a house where people were murdered and then, and then the, somebody moves in there and they and they get murdered too. So you, you see stuff like that. Those are demons that revolve around places and, and houses and stuff. And uh, so we lived in this really big house in Maryland. And um, I, I remember my room was very far apart from my, my parents' room and my sister's room. And my cousins always talked about Chucky and I was terrified of Chucky. It's crazy now. Cause now like this, this, how you know, this generation has become so wicked and desensitized. You show them a Chucky movie and they think it's hilarious back then. <laughs> how many people, you know, you know, in their thirties and up forties, Chucky was scary, <laughs> right? It was, it was, it was, it was, it was scary. You know, if you're under 30, probably not. Cause your generation is a little different, but, you know, when you're in your 30s and, you know, if you're in your, like I said, if you're in your early mid 30s and, and up, you Chucky was scary. <laughs> I'm still scared. What Sarah said. It was it was scary. Well, they kept watching it and I watched it with them. And um, I remember I was having a nightmare where Chucky was chasing me in my neighborhood and I was trying to run from him. And my neighborhood was getting flooded with water and I it, I started swimming, trying to avoid him. And I seen his little body sw swimming under the water towards me and I couldn't swim fast enough. And and in my dream, he came up to me and bit me on my stomach and he bit me so hard that I woke up in real life. I woke up like, ah, and I lift up my shirt. I had bite marks on my stomach in real life. When I woke up, I, I, I opened the door as a kid because I was watching Chucky with my cousins. I, my parents would never allow it in my house. So I watched it. That's why you got to be careful when your, your kids are, hey, or you're, you know, are around other family members around other family members. You think, Oh, I'm going to let such and such person hang out with their cousin. Well, little do you know what their cousin is up to. And what their cousin is doing. You got to protect your kids. This is why Halloween, the enemy takes advantage of this day to go after kids. After kids. And and, and that that happened to me. That happened to me in a dream. And I, I got attacked so much by demons. If you guys were there on Past and Appreciation Day, Satan has been targeting me since since I was in the womb of my mother. My, a demon, you know, a demon possessed woman punched my mother in the stomach on an altar call when I was she was pregnant by me to try to kill me. So the enemy does not like since I was in my mom's belly. 
My mom would t- my mom told that story. She was at an altar call, pregnant with me with her hands up, and that somebody started manifesting next to her and punched her in the stomach and knocked the wind out of her. Almost killed me. Right. So ever since then, Satan has had his target on me and say, I I don't want that kid. That's why you got to protect. See, even Satan recognizes life in the womb and in this world is abort kids. It's okay to kill kids or kill to kill babies because that's been Satan's agenda from the beginning. What Jesus wasn't even born yet. He was in Mary's stomach and Mary had to go to Egypt because Herod wanted wanted the babies dead. Pharaoh wanted babies dead. And that's why Moses almost died. But he wasn't even born yet. Come on, man. You got to understand John the Baptist was still inside his mother's belly when he flipped in his belly because he saw Mary coming and Jesus was in her belly. So life has always been in the belly, but Satan has always targeted those who are children of God since they're in their mother's womb. My wife, Pastor Christopher, you don't know, she's technically not supposed to be here. You know, my mother-in-law was she was pregnant with her and and, and a twin. My wife had a had a twin. And they had to uh, had to abort her, her, her sister. But the doctors didn't know that my wife was in there, had to abort because of, of health issues and certain things that were going on. And, and she lost the twin and she was still sick. She didn't know there was another baby in there. My wife survived the whole abortion process and was hiding in there. And the doctor said, hey, there's another baby in there. And. They said, you're going to have to abort it because if not, this baby is going to is going to grow up with issues or missing an eye or an arm and stuff. You're going to have to abort it. And my mother in law said no. And that's my wife is alive. You see how Satan has been targeting, targeting children of man. I get goosebumps. Satan has been targeting people of God from the womb. Satan knows he knows anointing even when you're inside the belly of your mother. That's why there's abortion and you have, I'm sorry, I'm going to say stupid, fake Christians saying, oh, I support Roe v. Wade. You are not a Christian. You're not a Christian. If you support Roe v. Wade, you do not. You're not a Christian and you're not saved if you support abortion because you are against what the Bible says. If you say you support that, then you're saying that you support that my wife shouldn't be here. And if you're going to say that about my wife, man, we going to square up any place, anywhere, anytime. The doctor said she, she, she should have been aborted. And look what she's here today. And guess what? The enemy was trying to kill me in my mom's stomach. So I, I, I come from a different place when I, when I, I, I'm passionate when it comes about the lives of babies, because I understand how the enemy works. And the enemy wanted me and my wife dead because he knew 30 plus years later. Unity, we would be the pastors of a church. We'd be casting demons out. We'd be we'd be discipling people and teaching them to be men and women of God. So you see that enemy knew. That's why you must protect children. And Halloween is a day dedicated to come after children. Children go missing. On Halloween, kids get raped. Some go get get kidnapped and get killed on Halloween. Some get poisoned. Some and I remember growing up as a kid, people would put razor blades inside candies as when I was a kid. So when a kid would eat it, the razor blade would cut their throats. Why do you think that, that parents inspect inspect your candy? And that's why it's a joke now. They'll say. <laughs> I have a shirt that says dad tax with candy and food because as your your dad would check your candy right before to make sure everything was good. Well, why even risk it? Just go to go to Publix, buy your kid candy and give it to him yourself. You know, candy ain't that expensive. Well, maybe in today's world. It, it, it glorifies terror. It, it talks about spirits. Halloween's always about spirits. And what does the Bible say that we don't war against flesh and blood, but against spirits, powers, principalities, uh, governors of darkness? Not too long ago, and and um, I know Lydia will remember. I was praying and I saw a purple demon. I've never seen this before in my life. I said, when I'm praying, I keep seeing a purple spirit with one eyeball, and it looks like this and that. Ever since I said that in prayer, and you guys remember that I said it, it kept popping up on me everywhere I went. I went to the zoo. 
and I took a picture of it. It was at the zoo. I went every and that spirit kept popping up. When we looked it up on Google and say, um, what does purple, you know, thing? And I, I, I explained in Google, you know, what it looked like. Is that a real thing? I looked it up and it happened to be it was called the purple people eater. And it goes after children it's like to take their innocence, take them, take it away from them, consume them and change them into what that thing is, which is a spirit of like perversion and pervert you and stuff like that. And God has always shown me demonic spirits and he reveals it to me and stuff like that. And that's why that's why the enemy has wanted me dead since since I was in my mom's stomach, because I would expose, as the Bible says, unfruitful works of darkness. But guess what? I'm not the only one. There's children out there, your children and the children out there. We must pray that God protects them and separates them so the enemy can't touch them and can't get to them. Amen. And Halloween is, is is going around. There's spirits operating right now. You know how how the devil is probably grinning right now because of how many foolish people are gonna celebrate this. And this is this is a night where many doors are opened. Many Christians are opening doors and opening doors for uh, uh, you know for their things to happen to their kids. This candy thing. Oh, but it's for the candy. You notice. You're supposed to go and collect an excess of candy. Well, that's called gluttony. When you eat an excess amount of food and an excess amount of candy, it's called gluttony. And even that is a spirit, a spirit of gluttony. When you're eating and you're having things when you're not even hungry anymore, that is a spirit. Amen. Dressing up. What? You know, you're dressing up in outfits. Oh, to look cool. You know, demons dress up. They shape shift. They change from different things. I've seen it so many times, so many times. I remember in a season of my life when I was single, before I met my wife, I remember the enemy wanted to attack me so bad. I remember one time I was sleeping and and I at the time I had a lot of women who claimed to be Christians were trying to pursue me. And I know in my soul, I would tell my mom, I'm like, you know, my pastor used to be like, hey, man, you should probably talk to one of them. They're in church. And I'm like, pastor, man, I, you don't know, man. They ain't, they ain't what they say they are. And I remember one time I was laying in my bed and and the spirit of God woke me up and told me, wake up, wake up. And 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 I was considering maybe talking to one of the girls and that was in the church. I got up and there was a demonic spirit that was a black shadow, but it had a purple glow around it. And it was doing like a, a stripper dance at the end of my bed. I wiped my eyes and I'm like, I must be still sleeping. And I wiped my eyes and it was still at the end of my bed dancing, trying to seduce me. And I saw the shape of its body and it was the same shape of the body of the girl that was at church trying to be with me. And when I found out later that that same girl was talking to someone else, at the same time who she's now married to. So God was protecting me and God always reveals spirits. If you open your eyes and you say, Lord, show me the unseen things that go on and God will show them to you. Last night I got woken up in the middle of the night. If you want to be prophetic and you want God to speak to you and you want, God, man, I feel the spirit of the Lord tonight and we're going to cast down spirits. We're going to pray against these things because Man, our kids need to be protected. And even the ones that are not our kids, we should be praying for them because they are also a chosen generation and they need to be covered. They need to be protected. And unfortunately, some children are under ignorant parents and wicked parents, and sometimes they don't have a choice. But we can pray and pray for them that God will cover them and protect them. Amen. And these things, you pray and you start asking God, if you want to be prophetic, you want God to reveal things, you want to be a seer in the spirit, you better be ready. You better be ready to see. And so you ain't going to sleep a lot of the time. You know, my wife would tell you, I get up a lot in the middle of the night. Last night, I got woken up like at four, three, four in the morning. And I spent my time praying because God was showing me a spirit that it had revealed itself to me last night. And I call my mom and I'm like, hey, I seen a spirit that came through the TV on, on such and such person. And she goes, well, that's crazy because yesterday this person didn't want to watch the TV because they were scared. And I said, so there it is. So we got to be careful. You know, the other day on my child's iPad, me and my wife were very careful what we let our kids see. And we don't even want our kid with an iPad, like being an iPad kid that you do that just because you want to distract your kids so they don't bother you. 
and stuff like that. And that's to me, I, I'm not going to go into parenting, you know, but we got to be very careful. Wow. I was up at 4 a.m. Exactly. And I felt heaviness, really heaviness. So you were on the money, Sally. Um, and, you know, so my child, you know, we, we put Christian stuff. You think because you have a filter on YouTube, you think you think YouTube respects your Christian filters? It doesn't. And I I, I was putting we, we put Christian cartoons for our kid. And right after my son gets real quiet, and I go look at his screen and it's a cartoon where these two kids are going into their closet and there was a demon waiting in their closet. I t took that thing off so fast and I'm like, we put the parental controls and he only watches Christian cartoons. But look, YouTube snuck that in. See, they're, they're at there. It's always an attack after the, 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 the children. There are spirits that are assigned to you and your kids to destroy them, to ruin them, to pervert them. So as Christians, if our eyes don't are not open spiritually, if our ears are not open spiritually, how are you going to see when the enemy is trying to get them? How are you not going to see the tactics of the enemy? The Bible tells us don't be ignorant to the tactics of, of Satan. That means Satan has tactics. He has a strategy on how he's going to try to ruin you. And if he can't ruin you, he's going to try to ruin your kid. He has a tactic. And guess what? Us Christians, we have no tactics. Most of us, we don't have a tactic. We just say, oh, I just, I leave it in God's hands. I'm not going to say, I'm you're not going to do nothing. I'm just, I trust the Lord. Well, guess what? If you trusted the Lord, you would have faith and faith without works is dead. That means if you had faith, you would actually be doing something about it. You just let the world and you let life and you let family members just do whatever with your kids. Start praying and asking God to reveal who, who should be in our kids' life. Who should even be watching our kids? I don't care who they are. And my family knows it. I don't care who you are. Ain't nobody watching my kid if you don't have to. And if you, someone's going to watch my kids because I felt okay, I felt good in my spirit that the Lord said, yes, because just because somebody's blood doesn't mean they should be watching your kid. That's when the most molestations and all these different things start happening. And you don't know until later on when you see that they're, they're, they're battling different sexual identities. So this is this is why we don't celebrate Halloween. A lot of these things happen on these days. They celebrate the dead. As Christians, we don't celebrate the dead. We celebrate life. Amen. It's a day where, like I said, where Satanists, witches, and warlocks, they pray. Like I said, they're doing demonic prayers probably right now as we speak. Kids, kids, kids go missing. There was a preacher. I don't know how true this is. I hope he's not lying. There's a preacher who claims that he, he knew some, um, Anton LaVey's daughter, who was the founder of the Church of Satan, and she was telling him everything that was going on, and they were praying against him around Halloween, and they said that they lied about the date to try to take away power or glory from what God did, but that Anton LaVey really died on Halloween. When I Obviously, when you look it up on Wikipedia, I think it says he died like two days before Halloween, but according to... This, what are the chances this this guy dies around how that he dies around Halloween when Christians started praying against the things he was doing? You see what I'm seeing? You see what I'm saying? We don't celebrate Halloween, and the scripture tells us why. In First Corinthians, you don't have to go there. I'm gonna read it quick. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 21 to 22. It says, You cannot drink from the cup of the Lord and from the cup of demons. Two. You cannot eat it at the Lord's table and at the table of demons, too. It says, what do we dare rouse the Lord's jealousy? Do you think we are stronger than he is? So some Christians will say, well, I celebrate Halloween. I can watch a horror movie because I'm spiritually strong enough for it to not affect me. This is the stupidest thing I ever heard. The Bible says pride comes before the fall. It says, let anyone who thinks he's strong. <laughs> it says whoever's strong be prepared because you're going to fall when you think oh I'm strong enough to do this the Bible says when we're weak he's strong 
You don't need to be strong. You need to let the Lord be strong in you. And that's called humility. Pride tells you I'm strong. I know without Christ, I'm weak. Without Christ, I'll fall into sin. Without Christ, I'm going to make the same mistakes that I always have. I need Jesus. I rely on his strength. Amen. And the scripture is saying we can't be drinking from the things of God and drinking from cups of demon. You can't be listening to worldly music Monday through Saturday and then go Sunday and you think you're going to just start worshiping God and feel God's presence. You're drinking, you're drinking from the cups of demon and then tr trying to drink from the cup of the Lord. You're fornicating and you're sleeping with your boyfriend and your girlfriend and then you expect God to bring you the one he has for you and honor, your, uh, honor you on the day you get married. That don't work like that. You're drinking from the cup of demons and trying to drink from the cup of the Lord. And the Bible says, for God cannot be mocked for whatever man soweth that he shall reapeth. When you sow that and you're playing around with that stuff, you, you, guess what? The only one who's really playing with you is Satan and he's playing with your soul. God's not going to be mocked. You can't play with these things. And you got a lot of churches that are conforming. I, I suggest you read. The, if you are going to read the book of Revelation, just read the letters to the church. You don't need to read the rest because it's it's very deep. If you're new in the Lord, especially don't be reading the rest of that. But if you're going to read something, read the seven letters in the beginning of Revelation to the church. And you're going to see how God is, is warning the church. Don't be a lukewarm Christian. Don't be the one that's conforming to this world. You can't drink from the devil and then try to drink from God and expect God to bless things. It's not going to work like that. Amen. And it says, why? Because we're going to rouse him to anger. That means, that means you're going to piss God off. <laughs> Amen. I don't know about you, but I don't want to get God angry with me. Amen. God, you know what? I always tell this to people. God does not get mad when you, you sin and you made a mistake. God gets mad when you sin and make a mistake and think you can play with God and go and try to be playing church and God. That's where you get God mad. God gets hurt that he sees you mess up, but he's not mad at you. If you, you're broken about it and you repent, the anger of God arouses when you think you can keep playing this game with him. And this is not of God. Third John chapter one, verse 11, third John chapter one, verse 11, it says, beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. He who does good is of God, but he who does evil has not seen God. So it says as Christians, we need to imitate the things that are good and godly. If we say we're Christian and we're good and we're godly, why would we imitate Halloween? Why would we imitate darkness? Why would we imitate fear and evil? Imitate. It shows that we don't know God when we imitate those things. When we say, nah, I'm not doing that and I'm going to be different, we showing that we are from God. When you're celebrating these things, you're showing that you don't know God. Amen. Ephesians 6, chapter, uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 12. This is Paul saying this to the church in Ephesus. He says, a final word, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all of the strategies of the devil. So Paul is warning us as Christians, you got to put on your armor. Why? Because this is a war. You may not see it, but there is a spiritual war that is going on in this world right now. It's going on to take over this nation. It's a war, spiritual war going on to take over your life. There's a spiritual war that has been set to come and take over your family, your marriage, your kids, your finances. There is a spirit, man, I feel the spirit of the Lord. There's a spiritual war that is going on, but you're not going to see it. You're not going to feel it if you're not in the spirit. This is something that can only be spiritually discerned. You will feel it in your spirit and God will wake you up in the night. May God will bring the, the thoughts in your head in the, the middle of you washing dishes. All of a sudden this thought pops in. There is a spiritual war that is going on in the unseen realm. But if you have spiritual eyes, you, God will let you tap into it and see some of it and see. And, and why? Because there is a strategy. It says put on all of God's armor that you'll be able to stand firm 
on all the strategies of the devil. Guess what? Don't be asking God to see things when you don't even got your armor on. Because guess what? When Satan sees that you've seen him, and he, but he sees you have no armor on, you're going to become easy pickings for him. So people say, oh, well, you know, I want to see in the spirit. I want dreams. I want visions. I want to see what the enemy's up to with no armor on. <laughs> You don't want to do that. You need your arm. You need your armor on. You live in a, we live in a Christianity right now where everyone wants to see in the spirit. I want to discern spirits. The first thing you need to do is got your armor on. Because the minute demons and the devil see that you are seeing them and you got no armor on, they're like, huh? You thought you came here to get us and expose us, but you just exposed yourself with no armor. Let's get them. And then these are the same people who get dreams and visions and it consumes them. And the, and the demons have their way with them and demons take over them. Why? Because you're asking to see in the spirit, but you're not asking for the tools and the things that you need to actually do something about it. Come on, somebody. That's why before you start asking God to let me see things, Say, God, help me to get my armor on so when I see things and the devil tries to bring it on, I'm good. <laughs> I'm ready to go. <laughs> Imagine you're like, God, show me where all the terrorists are at. And you go out there and you discover terrorists and the terrorists see you and you don't got no gun. You got no bulletproof vest or like you just came here to see us for no reason, because now that we know that you saw us, we're just going to kill you out here. <laughs> you came here to see and be unprepared. You just became our prey. That's why you got to ask God, help me to put my armor on. You need the armor of God. You need the helmet of salvation. You need the breastplate of righteousness. You need the belt of truth, the shoes of peace, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit. You need every single one of these things. And guess what? I'm here to tell you, putting on the armor of God is not you waking up and praying, saying, God, put on my armor. It's actually you applying it, having faith, walking in peace. Walking in truth, your head being protected by good thoughts, godly thoughts. You know, some of you, how are you going to go fight a devil when the devil is dominating your mind? Guy, I used to be a professional fighter. I, I'm telling you, I've seen guys out of shape, not really that good of a fighter, but they were mentally in a better place than the talented guy, and they always won. The fight is always in the mind first. And the Bible says, whatever a man think it, that's, that is what he is. The Bible also says, your thoughts run your life. You're going to ask God to see things in the spirit when you can't even control your mind? Yes, that's a recipe for disaster. You're just going to get closer to him, and he's just going to put more stuff in you. You got to put on the full armor of God. And God is telling you why. So you can stand firm. So if you don't have your armor on, and you're trying to come against the enemy, Will you be able to stand firm? No. You need all of the armor. Oh, but brother, I got faith. Okay, you got a shield, but you don't have the other parts of your armor on. Stand firm against what? That there is a strategy. And tonight, Halloween is a strategy of the enemy. And guess what? When we're done talking, we're going to pray. I don't. We. I want this church, Unity Church. I don't want us to be, you know, calling things out, but we don't pray for nobody. There's got to be intercession. And for, for you guys that were there on Sunday, I wanted to see intercession in the church. A lot of Christians don't even know what that is. They think it's a quick prayer. That's prayer. Intercession is when you actually pray for a longer period of time for things outside of you. There's people who come to church because they want prayer about their situation. I said, that's a form of apostasy, always looking for things about you. Well, that's self-seeking. And the Bible says where they're self-seeking, you're going to find all kinds of evil there. You got to come to church for God. If God decides to give you a word, praise the Lord. If God has a prophetic word and they pray for you, praise the Lord. But if not, you need to be ready to serve somebody else. There is somebody else that's dying. There's somebody else that needs Jesus. There's somebody else that's headed to hell. There's somebody else whose name is not in the book of life. Church does not revolve around you. And guess what? Pastor Jamie can't save them all. It needs you to wake up. It needs you to wake up and do something. Oh, I want, I want a word. Oh, I come to church because I, I want to get fed today. Learn to feed yourself, man. How long have you been in the Lord that you need to be fed? Babies need to be fed. An adult learns to feed themselves. Have you ever wondered who feeds Pastor Jamie and Pastor Crystal? 
I've learned to feed myself. My wife has learned to feed herself. I don't need to go around looking for prophetic words or things from people. I just open up my Bible and God will talk to me himself. Because I've learned to feed myself. I've been in the Lord long enough. That's why the Apostle Paul rebuked some Christians and said, hey, for as long as you've been a Christian, you should be a teacher by now, but you're still drinking milk. Got a lot of Christians say, oh, I've been in the Lord a long time, mature, but you still you need somebody to hold the bottle for you, man. <laughs> man, we're living in a time where we got to wake up. I won't be surprised if this video gets taken down, by the way. Cause I'm gonna start saying things, guys. I'm gonna just go off the record. Y'all know me. Y'all know how. <laughs> Y'all know how long I've been as a pastor. I'm just wild, man. I'm a wild man, just like John the Baptist. I'm a wild man. I don't care. I don't care what anyone says. I don't care what anyone thinks. I don't care what anyone tries to do to me, because I will put it all on the line for Jesus, man. I love Jesus. No one's gonna muzzle me. No one's gonna stop me. No one's gonna. Hey, you should preach something else. No, 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 no. Ain't nobody going to do any of that to me. Why? Because my Lord took it all on the cross. He gave it all for me. I got to give it all to him. And when I see what the devil does to some people, when I see what the devil um, um, takes advantage of Christians, it gets me mad. It gets me mad, man. Because I'm like, we were made for greatness, yo. God created us for greatness. And excellency, God had made us with power, yo. God made us, his, we're his masterpiece, yo. Why is the devil, why is the, why is the devil smacking us around, yo? When we have power, the Bible says to trample on snakes and scorpions. Last time I checked, Satan's supposed to be under my feet. But you got Christians so terrified of demons and a demon this and a demon got into me. Why are you such a weak Christian that demons keep coming into you, man? I like I like I say this all the time, man. I love deliverance. I cast demons out. I've been casting out demons out since 2008 before it became popular to do it. But I'm tired. I'm tired of seeing de Christians with demons in them. Why you got so many demons in you? Repent, man. Get your life right with Christ. The Holy Spirit should be so full in you. There's no space in, for for demons in you. And listen, that's not no knock to nobody on here that's gotten delivered. Praise God that you've gotten delivered. I pray you get delivered. And I'm not saying this because I want you Sunday all of a sudden to keep your demons in because I don't want Pastor Jamie to say, why do you got demons in you? That's not why I'm saying it. Is that you need to go from deliverance to dominion, yo. Sa Satan, Satan is under your feet. Why? Because your feet stink? <laughs> no, because because of the because Jesus said, I'll make the enemy my footstool. <laughs> and because Christ reigns in us, Satan should be your footstool. I mean, saying I should be able to put my feet on top of you and just. Because <laughs> devil, you don't have authority over me. You ain't got no power over me. Christ holds all the power and the authority over me. But we over there left and right giving demons power and authority. Like tonight, so many Christians giving Satan power and authority over their life, over their kids. What is this? And a lot of Christians will get mad. <laughs> I've even had Christians get mad. Oh, oh, you want to come against Halloween? How come you don't come against Christmas? Because I celebrate Jesus on Christmas. Are you celebrating Christ on Halloween? <laughs> You know how many religious people? Oh, but you got a Christmas tree. And tell me how a demon comes in through a Christmas tree. Man, I've been casting out demons for so long. I have yet to cast out a demon of Christmas. I command that Christmas tree spirit to come out of you. <laughs> and the person just starts smelling like pine tree and like, you know, coughing up ornaments and stuff. I have yet to see that. Never. So, obviously, is there stuff like Santa Claus and all weird stuff? Yeah. But, you know, we we we, we, we celebrate Christ. I, I don't celebrate elves. I don't celebrate Frosty the Snowman. And people say, oh, it's Christmas, Jesus' birthday. That's another argument that a lot of people argue. The Bible doesn't say um, 
uh, uh, that Jesus' birthday was on the 25th. The Bible doesn't say to brush your teeth, but you do it anyways. If, if I choose a day to celebrate Christ, who are you to stop me? If I celebrate Jesus the 25th, January, February, March, what is it to you? I'm celebrating Christ. Tell me how celebrating Christ is a bad thing. <laughs> Nobody knows what day he was born. But if the world decides to, if the world decides to choose a day, I'm going to take full advantage to celebrate Christ. <laughs> Does it mean it could be Christmas every day? Hey, Christmas has already started for me. I got my Christmas shirt, man, the Grinch. So, so if the world decides to, hey, this is the day I'm going to celebrate Jesus, I'm going to take full advantage. At least the world just chooses a day. But you got these super religious Christians. I'm not celebrating because the Bible didn't say to celebrate the 25th. And that's not the day, you know, that Jesus was born. Well, Jesus also didn't tell you, like I said, brush your teeth. Jesus didn't also tell you, you know, man. I, 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 I'll choose to honor and bless God. Now, if you're praying to Frosty the Snowman and you're putting elves and then repent. <laughs> if you're, if you're worship, Oh, but the Christmas tree, you know, you worship. If you're getting on your knees and worshiping your Christmas tree, something seriously wrong with you. Then you need to, you need to, uh, you need to repent. What about Purim? I don't know what that is. Amen. Some people say, so why are you speaking about against Halloween? Romans 12, two. It says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. We can't be, we can't conform to the world. And, and just for the record, the people that I have ever met, and I know some of you guys, you've encountered the same, that are worried about Christmas tree, worried about this, just if it's Jesus' birthday. They don't never have their own personal life with Jesus, right? But they're worried about Christmas. They're worried about a tree. They're worried about December 25th. There used to be a guy in my old church I used to go to. He was like, he stopped going to the church because he found out my pastor had a Christmas tree. Yet your daughter is a transgender. Your your son is depressed and wants to kill himself. Your marriage is on the rocks, but you're worried about a Christmas tree? Oh, well, I don't celebrate the 25th, but you're still masturbating. You're still watching pornography and you're worried about a tree. I have yet to meet someone that brought up those things and, and, and their life was in order. I've never met it. I've never met it. They're still sleeping with their girlfriend or boy, whatever it is, boyfriend, and their life is a mess. But all of a sudden, Halloween and Easter comes around and they're so holy. All of a sudden, they're so holy. That they don't, oh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> anyway, people said that. I, I met people, oh, I don't want to put a Christmas tree in my house while they're smoking a cigarette and I know they drink at home. Man, you got bigger fish to fry, man. You got bigger fish to fry. That Christmas tree ain't going to send you to hell, but all the other stuff you're doing is going to send you to hell. Listen, if, if, if that was such a big deal, Jesus would have wrote a scripture. And if people who go and quote Jeremiah that talks about fastening a tree and carving into it, who here carves their tree in Christmas and, 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 and carves into and draws spirits on their tree? Who here does that? <laughs> and people will use that scripture. See, the scripture talks about it. You shouldn't have a tree. Christmas didn't even exist when that was written. I wasn't even talking about that. Ah, but people don't know their word, man. Last scripture, Ephesians 5, verse 11 to 14. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11 to 14. It says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. So how do we know what we should celebrate and not celebrate? If it's an unfruitful work of darkness. If I decide to celebrate Christmas because I'm celebrating the life of Jesus and it's an opportunity to talk about Jesus with people, is that an unfruitful work of darkness? Yes or no? I want everybody to answer. If I decide to celebrate Christmas because I'm celebrating the life of Jesus, whether he was born on that day or not, 
if I decide to celebrate and use that as an opportunity to to talk about Jesus with people and celebrate Jesus and acknowledge that the world's is that an unfruitful work of darkness? Yes or no? No. So is it okay for us to celebrate Christmas? Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is okay. And if you don't want to celebrate Christmas, please DM me your address. Thank you very much. <laughs> Is Halloween an unfruitful work of darkness? Yes, it is an unfruitful work of darkness. Why do you think we celebrate? Well, not we. Why do you think the world celebrates Halloween at night? Think about it. They don't celebrate Halloween during the daytime. It's at night. I'm surprised my doorbell hasn't um hasn't gone off with stuff. They do it at night. If this Bible study is over and kids knock on my door, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I got something for you. Get out of them in Jesus' name. I'm gonna start doing deliverance on them. It says, for it is shameful. Look what it says here. For it is shameful. Even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. So when we're walking in the light of Christ, God reveals the things that are going on in darkness. God shows things, right, that, that what is going on in the darkness. I, man, I can't tell you how many times. God hasn't God has shown me certain things about some people that I'm like, I wish I didn't even know. My wife will tell you I had dreams with certain people, and I'm like, man, I didn't want to know that about that person. I didn't want to know that they did that. And but God shows it so we can pray, so we can make a difference. God didn't share it to you because he wants to gossip with you. God is sharing with you so you can make a difference, so you can pray, so you can war in the spirit that there's a spiritual war going on for that person, so you can do something about it because guess what we got power and authority but you can only operate in that power and that authority when you're actually walking in the light walking in the light you have to walk in the light you're gonna go evangelize and cast demons out but you're still sleeping with your girlfriend still masturbating still getting high still getting drunk that's you going out there unarmed no armor it's not going to go. It's not going to go well for you. It's not going to go well. Um, It says, but all things that are supposed are made manifest by the light for whatever makes manifest is light. So when you have the light of Christ in you, you make manifest what's in darkness. <laughs> you want demons to manifest? Walk in the light. They'll manifest. They're going to manifest. They'll expose themselves. That's why sometimes I'll pray for some of y'all and purposely I pray certain ways on church because I want the church to learn. Have you guys noticed that sometimes I'll make everybody stop or I'll tell everybody to come because I want you to learn how to cast it out, how to cast spirits out. And when you're ready and the time is right, you'll go and do it. This YouTube culture of telling everybody to go lay hands and anyone just go casting out demons, uh, the, the scripture don't tell you to do that. The scripture tells you, says, don't be hastily in the casting and in, in the laying of hands. It says, don't be quick to go and do that. You got to You got to be make sure that, you know, I got to make sure as a pastor, if, if, I, if, if I feel comfortable you doing this, because I know you know how to put your armor on. How could I send you as a. Let's say a commander or a captain, whatever you want to call it, send my send a soldier out to go fight an enemy when you don't even know how to put your armor on. That's why that's why we're very careful at this church of letting people lay hands and do stuff. That's why last Sunday I prayed for everybody. The Holy Spirit was like, you know, what? You, you could do it by yourself. <clears throat> and sometimes I may come off like a jerk <laughs> on Sundays. I don't need, I don't need nobody's help. I have the Holy Spirit's help. I have the Holy Spirit's help. But I'm trying to teach you guys to walk in the light and watch how the enemy is going to reveal himself. Watch how the enemy is going to manifest himself. I've been I'm telling you recently, I've had a lot of spirits reveal themselves to me. 
uh, two uh, two Sundays ago, I had a uh, I had a demonic spirit pop up in my dream, and he popped up in my dream and told me to my face. He said, "If you keep preaching what you're preaching in these last days, I'm gonna kill you." And I woke up, and I had acid reflex waking me up in the middle of the night, and I started choking on the acid that came up, and it was going into my lungs. My I woke my wife up, and she started praying for me because that never happens to me, and I, I and then. I'm telling you, my 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 lungs started burning from the acid and I woke up and the Lord was showing me that so I can pray about it. That's why some you be bold, be bold for Christ, but know that it comes with some consequences. Know that it comes with a price of the enemy coming after you even harder. But I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready for all the smoke. I spent too many years of my Christianity. I wasted a lot of my years. I'm not wasting no more. How many here can say, man, I'm I'm done wasting years of my life. I'm done wasting my Christianity not being bold. I'm going to be bold for the for the gospel. I'm going to be bold because we're in these last days. There ain't no time to be wasting. Whoever gets mad, let them get mad. They're going to get mad. Guess what? They ain't they're going to be they're going to be mad in hell too. Amen. And they're going to be even more mad at you on judgment day when they say why you didn't tell me nothing. So, they're going to get mad either one way or another. It says, oh, so yeah, that spirit manifested itself. And then last night I was having another dream and another spirit revealed himself to me. And I saw it and God showed it to me. And a lot of these things have been happening and I've been seeing it. And you guys know, every time I say a certain spirit reveals itself, that same Sunday we're casting it out. Not too long ago, I was talking about the spirit of Lilith. That same Sunday, I said, we're going to cast it out of some people. And guess what? It ended up coming out of certain people when I prayed against it. Because God shows us. God shows us spirits. God will, 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 will reveal what's hidden in darkness. Amen. And it says here, whatever makes manifest is like, therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead. Christ will give you light. So you need to wake up. If you're on here tonight and you're spiritually asleep, you got to wake up. Got to wake up. And we say, well, what do you mean wake up? You mean stop, play stop playing around. You got to wake up. It says, therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. Some of you are asleep, not because of sin. You're just your situation has you asleep. Your problems have you asleep. The things that you don't have yet has you asleep. Certain prophecies that haven't come to pass has you asleep. Your, your bank account has you asleep. Your kids have you asleep. Life has you asleep. And I'm here to tell you on behalf of the Lord tonight, you need to wake up. Awake. W and not just wake up. Get up. It says arise and Christ will give you light. Light for what? It tells you why. For whatever makes manifest is like God's trying to give you a light. God's trying to hand you a flashlight tonight and say, hey, I need you to see why this is happening to you. I need you to see what I need you to see why this is happening to your kids. I need you to see why there's an attack on your finances. I need you to see what's going on. And the only way you're going to know what's going on is if you have the light that he's trying to give it to you. And to have that light, you got to walk in the light and you got to wake up and you got to wake up. And the Lord actually showed me a dream about two people that go to this church, a young couple that go to this church. And when the time is right, I'm going to call you. So don't text me and say, is it me? <laughs> God does want you to be together. And I, I saw it in a dream. But because you're so distracted, you're still sinning and you're still all jacked up and you're still sleeping around and you're still doing these things. You're going to destroy what God wants to do. And the Lord, man, I feel the spirit of the Lord and I feel the fear of the Lord as I say this. God wants you to be together, but you're doing things wrong. And I actually saw a glimpse of the future and the Lord showed it to me. If you don't repent and stop messing around with each other. And stop sleeping with each other. Stop doing what you. If you don't stop, the Lord show me He's gonna send another person to be with her and another person to be with him, and you guys are gonna come back and and to make each other jealous, and then you're gonna end up walking away from the Lord. 
And it brought me such a sadness in my dream when I saw it because I walked into this and I seen a, a vision of the future and God was showing it to me and I was like, and I felt such a sadness and I'm like, what happened here? And God said, they, they didn't want to stop sinning. So they ruined, they destroyed what I would, what I would have liked for it to work out. You, and, and I'm gonna leave it there. And God was showing that to me. See, God shows things. Like I said, that these things that happen. My sister, who doesn't even go to this church. And my mom could say, amen, had a dream. And I haven't really been in a, the best relationship with my sister in over a year. Wrote me and said, hey, I had a dream with you last night. I was a dream. I was at a church and. A, this massive demonic spirit appeared at the church. And she said, it grabbed her and it slammed her on her back. And she had, um, was yelling out for the church members to come help her. None of them came to help her. And if anyone knows me long enough, you call me, text me, I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to hit you. And same goes for Pastor Crystal. You reach out to her, she, she's, she's going to respond. Hey, call me, I'm here. A lot of pastors, they ain't going to be there for you. A lot of these mentors, they ain't going to be there for you. They ain't going to call you. They ain't going to check up on you. They want your money. I don't need your money. Don't want your money. Don't need your money. And she said that she was calling out and nobody helped. And this demon was about to rip her apart. And she said in the dream that a door opened and I walked in. And when I walked in, the devil, that demon turned into a coward. And it shape shifted into a minister. And it turned into a minister trying to pray for her. But reality was preying on her. So it changed and it hid itself. So I, so because it knew that I could see him. I've always seen spirits since I was a kid. And I, and, and, and I'm trying to train you guys to be a seer in the spirit. Because there's an enemy out there and we have the ability to stop him. There's, we have the ability to stop them. I'm here to tell you guys, you're on here tonight. You have power and authority to stop Satan with his strategy. You get to stop him in his tracks and say, uh-uh, not with this person, not with my family, not with my kids, not with my marriage, not with my future. Uh-uh, I stop you right here in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, that gets me hyped. Oh, you're trying to destroy this in my life? Nope, nope, nope. I bind you in the name of Jesus. That's why I cast out demons in certain ways that I don't have to, but I do it on purpose because I want you guys to see it, how demons have to obey. They have to obey. I've told demons, hey, you're going to go to the floor. Boom. And they go straight to the floor. I said, you're going down and you got to go down. Because demons have, I want you to, I want the church to see, man, we got authority, yo. We got power and authority. I'm going to cut the recording here because I'm going to say something. And I know if I say it, then YouTube's going to take this video down.